Hello boys and girls, welcome to my channel, I'm for Classic and welcome to Benchart. It happened. Persona, it is finally available on the PC Atlas. Uh, just released Persona 4 Golden Edition for the PC. People were expecting to see Persona 5, but they just said, nah, 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 nah. You have Persona 4 first. So I was at the PC gaming show and suddenly out of nowhere these guys just said something like, so Persona 4 Golden Edition, it is now available on the PC on Steam. And I was like, what? I just gone to Steam and immediately I noticed that the game was available for a very good price of $19.99. So let's take a look at how this game performs on the Intel HD 620. This is possibly the weakest graphic card that you can get at the moment. And even with the weakest graphic card, you can play the game at 1080p maximum settings. So what? Let's take a look on the requirements. So the recommended requirements point out that you need a 1st generation i5, 4 gigs of RAM and for the graphic card you need a GTX 560 or an AMD Radeon HD 6870. There is no specifications in here for Intel, uh, so you don't really know if it runs or not according to the requirements. But the thing is, it runs pretty well. So at 1080p maximum settings I was able to get an average of 46 frames per second with a 1% low of 32. I decided to try out also the 720p with maximum settings and what I got was an average of 65 with a 1% low of 46, which means that the experience was overall above 45, while 1080p provided an experience above 30 frames per second. For me, 1080p maximum settings, it is perfect because this is a GRPG game and the combat system it is turned based. So 30 frames per second, it is more than enough for this game. So talking a little bit about the game, this game was developed by Atlas. Atlas are responsible for the Persona series and also the Catherine. Catherine was released last year on the PC. Uh, probably it was some sort of a test. Possibly we did pass the test because I'm not really sure if the game did sold well or not. But today we have Persona 4 on PC and this is great. And possibly if Persona 4 sells well enough, we will have on the future Persona 5. I'm pretty sure it won't be hard for this game to sell well, since uh, Persona, it was a, kind of a series that PC gamers, PC gamers always want. And at 19.99, I think that this game will sell pretty well. And honestly, last night I was checking the score of the game, and the game already had a score of 97% on Steam, with a ton of thumbs up uh, for the game, nobody was saying bad things about the game. And actually the port it is pretty well done. Because you kind of get some graphical settings, most of them don't do much aside from the shadow, the shadow uh, enabled or disabled. This one impacts about the performance, but I mean you still have a graphical settings that does work. Uh, contrary to many Japanese titles, this game doesn't have a frame rate lock, so you can use any frame rate that you want. It is not, it is not locked to 30 or 60. Unfortunately, it doesn't bring an option for you to lock frame rate. Which means that if you want to lock frame rate, you need to use a third-party solution. Uh, you support the game supports arbitrary resolutions, so you can select any resolution that you want, and you can use windowed full screen or border. But I know that uh, this is something that uh, we PC gamers take for granted, but when it comes from Japanese uh, developers, we never know. Also, these guys uh, decided to include uh, a mapping system for the keyboard. So the game does, uh, does play well with keyboard if you want, so usually I use gamepad, I never tried keyboard and mouse. But the game works well with the keyboard and allows you to switch up the, the keys that you want. So it supports some key mapping or key reconfiguring mapping, whatever. So you can uh, you can specify whatever the keys that you want to, to play the game, which is a good thing. So the game it is from 2008 and the Golden Edition was released in 2012. 20, I mean, or 12. I always mix up these two. And what happens really is that this game was initially developed for PSU and PS Vita. So the graphics are pre-PS3 era and the engine behind this game it is a renderware. In case you don't know the renderware, the renderware was the engine behind GTA 3, GTA Vice City and GTA San Andreas. It was also used in multiple other games nonetheless. But yeah, this is the engine being used. And this video doesn't really show you much about the graphics and visuals about the game because I'm just running a random dungeon in here, um, which is random generated, randomly generated. Every time you go to this dungeon, it is different. 
but the game visuals uh, are pretty old. Uh, there is nothing dynamic about it. The only thing dynamic it is the shadows from the characters. All the stuff it is pre-baked. But, I mean, the art style of the game, despite its age, it holds up pretty well. Especially on your apartments, on, on school. Everything feels so damn atmospheric. And there is kind of a weather system into the game, which is not dynamic. But, uh, for example, each day have its own weather. So if you get out, uh, for example, on a Friday, this is just an example. It might be sunny, it might be cloudy, it might be raining. Some events only happen during cloudy or rainy days or sunny days. And that is a kind of a day and night cycle that is also not dynamic. These first five hours, I'm not really sure how the game will be throughout the rest of the game. But all the things were pretty much scripted. If you don't enjoy a lot of conversations, this game it is not for you. Because these first hours, the game spent most of its time development, uh, developing the, the characters for you. So you were forced into a ton of conversations that was pretty much no action at all. But I think it was insane because it really got me uh, woke up for five hours because I was so into the characters, so into the atmosphere of the game. The story is quite nice, so you are a, a teenager that was from the city at the school and you just decided to change uh, from school. And you have gone to a small village where nothing happens, there is nothing to do there. So colleagues rely a lot on each other. So you just gone to that school. Also, uh, the brother of your mother just lent you a room for you to stay, where she have a daughter, a very nice daughter. Uh, I mean, not a nice daughter on a sexy way, she's, she's very small, but I mean, she's a nice girl. Although, something starts to happen, of course, that's what makes the game interesting, and people start to get killed. And people, uh, the police starts to investigate and the police can't do anything about it because they don't really know what the hell it is happening. And so you and your colleague starts to discover that something is wrong and some supernatural stuff starts to happen to your colleagues and to you and that is relatable with the, the deaths. I'm not going to spoil you more than this because I think that the first hours are very important for the game because despite you spent the time there just closed into the story, forced with the character talking between each other. I think it's very important to develop the to developing the game. The game starts really, really slow. The first combat that you have, very things are just scripted. Only now, after these five hours, the game was open to me to do this dungeon freely. And this game supports some sort of open world, but it is pretty much comparing to comparable to the Tomb Raider, Tomb Raider: Angel of Darkness. Because you have just a, you have a street, and you cross the street, and the game loads. You just go upstairs on the street, and the game loads. You enter the shop, and the game loads. So yeah, the, I mean the scenarios are pretty small, and they are just small rooms. I, w I would even say that the street it is a small room outside that allows you to to traverse for now i didn't add too much freedom but i'm pretty sure the game at some point will set you free and let you go whatever you want all right that's that's the point i haven't had too much freedom but i just roamed about a little bit throughout the open world and it was fine also the conversations the voice acting in this game are astonishingly good and despite i'm not playing with the original voices which was japanese i'm playing with the english voices it is insanely well done and most of the voices most of the stuff it is voice actors so which is pretty good it allows you to connect better with the the characters also like i did told you despite the visuals are old the art style the atmosphere it is really great the soundtrack i can't really show you near because of copyright issues the soundtrack it is oh my god it is insane i'm not really sure why but japanese games always nails that in the soundtracks and this is a really really good soundtrack but the best of the game after all it is is that the game it is pretty good you spend a good time playing it and it is a game that can last you more than 100 hours to finish. So it is a game with a ton of content for you to explore. And if you like GRPG games, this is absolutely for you. This game also feels a little bit like Pokemon because the personas are monsters within you that you can use to fight other monsters. So yeah, 
great great stuff for 19.99 this is insane the game might be old but persona series it is new to the pc and if persona 4 sells pretty much a lot of copies i'm pretty sure that atlas wouldn't resist to release persona 5 on pc which is a highly requested game by the community but for now persona 4 it is an it is available it is cheap it is a Zenovo, so it means that uh, if you want to crack this game for some reason, uh, I'm not expecting that you you will be able to do it. So just buy the damn game because it really deserves the money. It uh, sets you off uh, a ton of hours for you to play. It is easy to run. As you can see, it runs on this Intel GPU um, at 1080p maximum settings just fine. Uh, this is great, honestly. I'm very hooked up with this game. I'm surely going to finish this game. I will play this game all day from the days to come. Well, I still have a job, but I will surely play a lot of time in this game. So, guys, thank you a lot for watching. If you have any question about the video or about the Intel HD uh, 620, just let me know. Thank you a lot for watching, and I do hope to see you soon. Goodbye. Feminine. She's the one all the guys drool over. When Yukiko looked at me with such jealousy? Man, did I get a charge out of that! Yukiko knows the score! She can't do anything if I'm not around! I'm better than her! Much, MUCH better! No! I've, I've never thought that! What are we gonna do? We need to protect Chie-chan right now! No! Don't come near me! Don't look at me! Chie, calm down! No! No! This isn't me! Wait, stupid! Don't say anything else like that! <laughs> That's, That's right. right. I'm the one who can't do anything, anything alone. alone. I, I can't, can't win, win as a girl. girl. Let alone as a person. I'm pathetic. But you can go. She depends on me. <laughs> That's why she's my friend. I'll never lose my grip on her. She's too important to me. No! That's not how I think of her! <laughs> so you're just going to turn your back and deny me again? But things are different now. When the time comes, I'll be the one left standing. You won't mind, right? I'm still you. Shut up! You're... Jie, no! You're not me! Partner, good answer. Ready or not, here we come. Looks like you won't understand without a little pain. Get out before me. Here it comes. Ah, that was intense. You okay? You're gonna pay, damn it! Counting on you! Persona! <laughs> How lame! 
You're all so deadly serious and we've only gotten started! Thank <laughs> you. 